Hello, this is Stephanie Beer from Healthcare Services at the Healthcare Authority. Welcome to the Healthcare Integration Update webinar covering changes coming in April 2016. This is training session two in the Healthcare Integration Update webinar series. The purpose of this webinar is to provide you with more detail about fully integrated managed care in Southwest Washington and the impacts of these coming changes on how healthcare services are purchased and delivered starting in April 2016. Information regarding the next webinar in this series will be shared roughly two weeks prior to the scheduled webinar. These additional webinars will cover specific aspects of healthcare transformation to provide you with the tools to assist Apple Health individuals. We will not be providing an overview of material covered in the healthcare integration training session number one. At the end of today's webinar, we'll share the link to view prior webinars in this series. The topics covered in the previous webinar include regional service areas, behavioral health organizations, Apple Health fully integrated managed care, Apple Health foster care, and earlier enrollment. Today, we will be talking in more detail about fully integrated managed care in Southwest Washington which is the early adopter region. This includes Clark and Skamania counties. To begin, we would like to clarify that the changes we are talking about today only impact Medicaid purchasing. These changes do not impact the federal Medicare program or private insurance sold on the health benefit exchange. This map illustrates how regions within Washington will be represented for the Medicaid transformation efforts we are discussing in this webinar series. We are sharing it again as a reminder that regional service area designations will take place on April 1, 2016. And to remind everyone that Southwest Washington is comprised of Clark and Skamania counties. Beginning in April 2016, there will no longer be a regional support network in Southwest Washington. Instead, the state will be divided into these regional service areas. Behavioral health organizations responsible for specialty mental health and substance use disorder services will serve each of these regions, except Southwest Washington, where there will be two Apple Health managed care plans that will provide the full continuum of physical and behavioral health services to our clients. Who will be impacted by this change? The combination of these integration efforts has a cumulative effect on touching every individual who receives care from the Department of Social and Health Services and the Healthcare Authority in Washington. Anyone who interacts with the Medicaid system or healthcare providers will be impacted in some way by this change. Today, we're going to focus on the impacts to clients and providers in the Southwest Washington region. What does this mean for Medicaid clients? Managed care organizations are being selected now who will provide not only physical, but also behavioral health services specialty mental health and substance use disorder or SUD services to our clients in Southwest Washington. Remember, there will be no regional support network or county substance use disorder system. State plan benefits stay the same. However, access to care standards that delineate which clients are eligible to receive the higher acuity RSN level mental health services will no longer apply. Clients will receive the appropriate level of care when they need it based on medical necessity and level of care guidelines. Clients will continue to have access to block grants or state funded behavioral health services that complement the Medicaid benefit package. Clients should expect better, more coordinated care. There will be one point of contact available for all services instead of navigating up to three systems. 
individuals will have a choice of at least two managed care organizations. This is a change for Skamania County, which has been served by only one MCO and so is currently considered an optional county. What does this mean for providers of Apple Health Services? It is important to emphasize that if a behavioral health provider wants to continue providing Medicaid services, they must contract with a fully integrated managed care MCO to provide services to individuals who receive Medicaid services in Southwest Washington as of April 1, 2016. Providers must be enrolled and in good standing with the state Medicaid program. Substance use disorder providers most likely to be impacted since moving into managed care is totally new to them. Managed care organizations have already done their outreach to build their network. The Health Care Authority has recently completed a competitive contracting process and can now announce the apparently successful bidders for the fully integrated managed care contracts are Molina Healthcare of Washington and Community Health Plan of Washington. All clients in managed care today in Southwest Washington are members of either Columbia United Providers or Community Health Plan of Washington. However, it is important to know that individuals who currently receive care through Columbia United Providers will be transitioned to Molina in January 2016. This transition will not require any client-initiated change requests. The process of enrolling all our clients into one of the two integrated service packages offered by Molina and CHPW will also be automated, not requiring a client-initiated request. Now, we are going to clarify more in depth the fully integrated managed care program and the behavioral health services only program in the Southwest Washington region. Fully integrated managed care program basics include, beginning April 2016, the Healthcare Authority will contract with two managed care organizations for the full scope of Medicaid physical, mental health, and substance use disorder services. Clients with physical and pharmacy coverage will be enrolled in fully integrated managed care in Southwest Washington. There are coordination provisions in these contracts for individuals to transfer, transition, or move to other regions, BHOs, and out of the region. We will now focus on the Behavioral Health Services Only Program in the Southwest Washington region. BHSO, or Behavioral Health Services Only Program, within Southwest Washington, there will be some populations that are not eligible for the full array of healthcare services due to other health coverage, such as Medicare. These populations typically access physical health services through the fee-for-service system. Unlike the physical health fee-for-service system that HCA operates, there is no equivalent fee-for-service behavioral health system that will be available in April 2016. Because of this, certain clients such as dual eligibles or tribal members who choose to opt out of managed care will be able to access behavioral health services through the Behavioral Health Services Only program, accessible via the same managed care organizations that administer fully integrated managed care in this same region. The best way to think about the BHSO program is that it's simply a different benefit package offered by the same NCOs but not including the physical health services. Another way to think about it is that these services are the traditional mental health and substance use disorder services that are currently managed by Department of Social and Health Services contractors within regional support networks and counties. Since there will be no regional support network or behavioral health organization in the Southwest Washington region, 
The managed care organizations that administer fully integrated managed care will be responsible to provide mental health and substance use disorder services for these Medicaid-eligible individuals in this region. Let's review the different enrollment pathways. The table on this slide is a helpful way to envision enrollment pathways for individuals with Apple Health benefit packages. Most Medicaid clients will be enrolled in the fully integrated managed care program. Clients who are either exempt from managed care, such as individuals on Medicare, or who are allowed to opt out of managed care, such as individuals who are Native Americans or Alaska Natives, will be enrolled in the Behavioral Health Services Only program. This will be set up for ensuring those enrolled in Medicaid can continue to access services. Those within Apple Health Foster Care, such as individuals in foster care, foster care alumni, and individuals who receive adoption support, will receive their medical services through Coordinated Care of Washington Managed Care Organization. These individuals will receive their behavioral health services through fully integrated managed care and behavioral health services only managed care organization. A number of publications will be sent to individuals with Apple Health starting this month, December 2015. This slide provides a high level implementation timeline. As mentioned earlier, CUP clients will be transferred to Molina. Clients enrolled now with CUP will receive a letter soon that explains their transition to Molina effective January 1, 2016. General information regarding fully integrated managed care, behavioral health organizations, and Apple Health Foster Care will be sent starting in January 2016, as shown on this slide. The enrollment effective date for all five of the initiatives will be April 1, 2016. During webinar three of this series, we expect to share examples of each of the publications that will be sent to individuals with Apple Health. We are very focused on ensuring accountability and monitoring the fully integrated managed care, managed care organizations closely. Some examples of this include Healthcare Authority and Southwest Washington are developing an early warning system to identify and rapidly respond to any gaps in services or issues that occur after April 1, 2016. Healthcare Authority contracts provide a strong monitoring and oversight of health plans. The Southwest Washington Implementation Team turns into a monitoring team on April 1, 2016 to work directly with HCA on monitoring for this region. Their monitoring team's role will be to provide technical and transition assistance in the community, act as a liaison between the healthcare authority and the broader Southwest Washington community, review and assess health plan readiness with the healthcare authority, and include county representatives. As an ATU moving forward, we have created a short glossary of frequently used terms related to these healthcare transformation changes in 2016. AHFC stands for Apple Health Foster Care. BH stands for Behavioral Health. As a reminder, behavioral health is a combination of mental health and substance use disorder services. BHO stands for Behavioral Health Organization. BHSO stands for Behavioral Health Services Only. These services are contained with the fully integrated managed care contract in Southwest Washington and are comprised of behavioral health services for individuals with other care, such as those who also have Medicare. FIMC stands for Fully Integrated Managed Care. These are managed care contracts in the Southwest region that include physical and behavioral health services together. MCO stands for Managed Care Organization. 
RSA stands for Regional Service Area. RSN stands for Regional Support Network. SUD stands for Substance Use Disorder. Sometimes these services are also called CD or Chemical Dependency Services. SWWA stands for Southwest Washington. The next webinar in this series will be offered in the near future with more specific detail about the fully integrated managed care project, including fully integrated managed care in Southwest Washington, including behavioral health service only services, how non-Medicaid clients will be served in Southwest Washington, client pathways from today to enrollment in FIMC by April 2016, coordination among regions. We will also talk about crisis services in the Behavioral Health Administrative Services Organization and present information about who to call regarding specific questions about these healthcare transformation activities. For more information about the topics covered in today's presentation, HCA and DSHS website information is listed on this slide. For early adopter questions, please email HCA at earlyadopterquestion at hca.wa.gov. For behavioral health organization questions, please email DSHS at bhotransition at dshs.wa.gov. This video and presentation slides will be posted in 7 to 10 days on the HCA training and education website listed on this slide. Thank you for joining us today to learn about healthcare integration. I would like to include a couple updates to this webinar. In this webinar series, we refer to chemical dependency, or CD, or substance use disorder, SUD, but when speaking with clients, please call these services drug and alcohol treatment. Also, when speaking with clients, try not to use acronyms, such as FIMC and BHSO. Instead, using the term whole person care when referring to fully integrated managed care would be most helpful to the clients who call. Okay, so I'd like to uh, solicit for lots and lots of questions. We have very, very few right now. So go ahead and send your questions now through the questions panel, and we'll go ahead and get started. So if primary care providers do not take Molina or CHPW, what should clients do? Uh, so the, the first step would be to look and see what other providers that you might have that do contract with one or the other of the health plans. If you have a specialty provider that contracts with Molina or, or um, CHPW, then um, you might want to choose a plan based on your specialist. If you have a pharmacist that you are particularly um, have a good relationship with, that would be a way to go. Um, uh, you could ask your primary care provider if they would please consider signing a contract, and if they say yes, you can direct them back to us, and we will help get them directed to the health plans to um, hopefully sign a contract. I think the important thing is, is that they will need to be contracted with either Molina or CHPW for them to be a covered provider that you know, can be paid. So it's important to change. Um, the next question. Okay. How will the transition of all foster kids to Coordinated Care of Washington on April 1, 2016 change the way foster kids get behavioral health and substance abuse treatment? So for the foster children that are enrolled in Coordinated Care for their medical benefits, they will be using one of the two managed care plans who provides behavioral health services as their behavioral health service provider. So where now they use RSN paid services, in the future they'll have a choice of either CHPW or Molina, and one of those two health plans will coordinate with 
coordinated care to make sure that the benefits are as seamless as possible to the client. Question number three, will there be case coordination for these patients and who will provide this service? So um, the coordination of care that happens for folks in the fully integrated managed care system will definitely be either their, either one of their health plans, Molina or Community Health Plan of Washington. There are lots of new requirements in the contract because of the added responsibilities having the behavioral health services, the mental health, and the chemical dependency treatment services in that contract. So, um, so for sure, the folks who have both medical and behavioral health will have their, their chief uh, coordination managed through this, those uh, managed care plans. On the other hand, the folks who have medical in one place and behavioral health in another will have a care management function that's um, more of a shared responsibility. So for example, in foster care, again, there's lots of new responsibilities for coordinated care to have care management, care coordination of those foster care kids, but they'll need to work together with the managed care plans who provide behavioral health services to make sure that the care is seamless and uh, provided in a way that best meets, meets the needs of the enrollee. Thank you, Alice. Just to clarify, in non-early adopter regions, will foster care youth be able to access RSN BHO Behavioral Health Services on April 1, 2016, or will they have to go through Coordinated Care of Washington? For the rest of the state outside of Southwest Washington, the behavioral health organizations will, con will be the ones managing their mental health and their chemical dependency or substance use disorder treatment, treatment services. Okay. How can we find providers that accept this care? So again, you might start with the providers that you see now and ask them um, if they, which of the health plans they're contracted with. You can call one of the two health plans and ask them, or, or call them both and ask them, you know, with your list of uh, both primary care and specialty providers in your hands, you can call and say, do you contract with this doctor, this nurse practitioner, this mental health provider, this chemical dependency or, or substance use disorder treatment provider. So it's, I think it's important, especially the, the more different providers that you see, to check with both health plans and make sure which of the various providers they contract with. And the easiest way to do that is to go straight to the managed care plan. And, and I just want to add, I think especially given the transition between CUP and Molina, they're making a lot of changes in their network. This period between now and April, I agree, we, I think one is going to be your best bet. I did want to remind people that after April, I would say after April, when the plans hopefully have their network solidified and more stable, they are also keeping those networks on Health Plan Finder. So you can use the function in Health Plan Finder to go find uh, which providers belong to which uh, managed care organizations. Okay, how will counties outside of early adopter Southwest Washington, Clark and Skamania counties, be changing April 1st? So we didn't get into a lot of detail about that in this webinar because we covered it in the earlier webinar, but outside of Southwest, as Stephanie noted, the regional service networks will go away, regional support networks will go away, and DSHS is standing up behavioral health organizations. They will serve then the rest of the state, and um, the, there is additional information available on DSHS's website, which is listed up here and in our previous webinar, number one. Will there no longer be other insurance other than CHPW and Molina? In Clark and Skamania counties, those are the two insurance providers that other than be, foster, other than foster care, who will be providing the services um, for enrollees in those counties? How will this impact clients receiving treatments or medications under CUP 
which are not covered or authorized under Molina. So right now we're uh, working with the two managed care plans on, a, on transitional arrangements to make sure that, again, as seamlessly as possible that when folks roll over from, Clark, from Columbia United over to Molina, that um, those services will be uh, offered in a continuous fashion. So um, again, you could call Columbia United providers now and ask them directly if you are concerned about specific uh, services. Um, you can call Molina and ask them specifically if you're concerned, but um, we are paying attention to that and we, they do have arrangements to share information um, across the two health plans so they know uh, to keep their antennas up for folks uh, so that services don't uh, fall through the cracks when folks get moved from one plan to another. Okay, so that was our last question. So we'll allow just a few more seconds. If you guys have any other questions, please send them right now. We're about to wrap up our webinar. Um, one other thing I just thought I would bring up is that, as you know, there's, there has been most of our attention and questions about the transition from um, CUP over to to Molina, but just to also make sure that folks know that Molina does uh, currently have many, many thousands of enrollees in Clark County. So um, it's not a brand new plan in that area. They already have an existing provider network, um, and it's certainly possible if, if you are uh, interested or if you have clients interested in switching over to Molina before April, that's possible to do right now because Molina does have a contract to serve Clark County now. As regional service areas come online April 1st, if there are some plans that do not have network adequacy in the full region, but in the past have provided coverage within a county within the region, how will this transition be managed and how will members be transitioned? This, in, this is for all other regions excluding Southwest Washington. So I think we will need to get back to you on this question because it isn't in the direct scope of the early adopter project to do the transition to regions. I know there's been conversations about this, but Alice and Stephanie and I aren't necessarily the experts. So we will get back to you on that question. Okay, so just a few uh, reminders as we wrap up our webinar. This video and training, or this video and presentation slides will be posted in seven to ten days on the HCA Training and Education website listed on the bottom of this slide. Uh, the next webinar, training session number three, has been scheduled for December 18th at 2 p.m. and a webinar invitation will be sent out later this afternoon. We'd like to thank you again for joining us today to learn about healthcare integration.